Keep going, sir. That's a good one. How about the disciples of the books? Have you ever just said, Lord, do you care that this thing is killing me? <laughs> Jesus right down the boat. Let me wake up with you. Do you, do you care that I'm struggling? I mean, layers and layers. I, I'm telling you what. There was a season in my walk. I said, you know what? I can make a movie. I will call it Job 3. <laughs> the sequel. Because <laughs> it, it, it just felt like that. One thing after another. And they, none of them were good. And they were getting worse. And I said, come on, what's wrong? You know what? And you know what my friend said? And, and this is how, that's why you got you to keep short lists. Because all my friends said, you need to leave. You need to go away. And then one of them said, you are a disgrace to the body of Christ. You just need to leave the church and quit hurting all those folks. Y'all remember that? I told y'all, y'all just need to quit hurting all those folks. Don't take a sabbatical. Just leave. Just go. Because you harmful. You know? Can I let that thing get down in my spirit like that and start believing it? You know what I heard? The Lord said, and you will not move. I said, I'll stay in the back. He said, no, you ain't going to stay in the back either. You're going to go right over there to that piano like you do. <laughs> and you will sing and worship in your spot like you called to do. And you will show the people how to go through. He said, that don't feel good. He said, it ain't about feel good. Huh? I said, well, do, do you care that all this stuff is happening to me like this? Wow. He did, but he didn't stop. <laughs> Next. Job said, here's, my, here's the introduction to my movie. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, I can see him working. I cannot, I, I cannot behold him. He hided himself on the right hand. I can't see it. Everybody said, but you're in a good place. Don't say that to me. I'm not in a good place. <laughs> you know, and then coming, you know, and, and then that favor, 828. He's going to work it all together for your good. No, it ain't. No, it ain't working for my good because I don't feel good. Now, I know. Long term, it's going to work. But I need to somebody to speak to my emotions right now. This ain't feeling good right now. Don't hit me with a scripture. Huh? So, you know, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it, it is a fact that when you're kind of depressed and going through, you seek out comforts. That's where we come up with comfort food. You know what comfort food is? Portillo's. <laughs> the new Grand Express they just opened up on Oakland that's it the Grand has already been a strong tower for me <laughs> when I run in there I feel safe <sighs> what Y'all don't know, y'all don't know about the Grand. Woo, many deliverances happen down there at the Grand Cafe. That's right. He said, that's an abomination. Y'all don't know. All right. I can't see him. I can't see how this is benefiting me. Right. God, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is not right. Wow. Next slide, please. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down underneath a juniper tree. Now this, this is bad. Y'all know, I know y'all don't want me to talk about this. Let's talk about how many times we have contemplated getting out of here. <laughs> Ambassador Danette, is it true? Amongst the Christian community. The silent, the silent killer is suicide. Now you, now you say, 
and you say, I would never think about it like that. I'm telling you, there were days I went truck hunting. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. You don't know what I mean by truck hunting. I went out looking for a semi to get in front of. Oh, we need to do something with you. <laughs> why? Why? Because the weight of it was ju just that heavy. I just said, you know, it would just be better to get out of here, and that way I wouldn't have to tell nobody it was delivered. Or deer hunting. One of these bucks could take you out real quick. Anything. I said, in Mackinac, let me just drive up to Pekin. That's an accident waiting to be happened. Wouldn't take much. Oh, get it! <laughs> this is the prophet. You know, that whole prophetic, we got some people in there talking. That whole gift lends itself to a disconnect. I'm getting, getting real close. That whole, that whole gifting. There's a disconnect from people in there that makes you feel even more isolated. I understand why the man said, you know what? That's enough. Okay, next place. Have you ever thought I expressed the following? These are some of the ones that I just pulled out of my days. Ready? I'm through. See, that meant drop the mic before drop the mic. <laughs> That's what that meant. You ever use that one? Huh? Next, how about? I'm out. Right? I mean, right in the middle of it. That same meaning. There were about 14, 12, 14 families in the church said, You don't think my heart went with it? That's what, 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 what's wrong with this? This is supposed to be healing and deliverance and all the things you said. This feel like tearing, rending, something coming apart. And it was actually something being birthed. Next one. I'm done. What do, what do you really say? You're in a conversation with somebody, and they're talking, and you just, I'm done. Yeah. Move your lips. I ain't hearing a thing. I'm done. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. I'm still sitting here in the chair, but I am so done. Yeah. It's called multitasking. That doesn't ring a bell? Huh? I mean, you've never been in one of those places people just told you, told you, and you're just so far away from the conversation. They said, what'd you say? I don't know what you I went to my happy place. <laughs> That's real. Next. Peace out. Say that, peace out. What does it mean? I, I am finished. Uh -huh. I'm finished. Peace out. You see, here, here, here is some of this. All of these are not physical actions. They might be mental places that you drop down into. You start running another program. Next one. Here you go. These are like, that's it. <laughs> Joker, you've done this for the last time. That's it. All right, next. How about exit? We say exit left stage. <laughs> Next, overload. <laughs> overload. Oh, they get, they get hysterical. Um, they, here, here goes the boat. Let's see what you think about this. Later. Yes? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sister malfunction. 
Wait, wait. <laughs> system malfunction. System malfunction. System malfunction. Right? Give me an expert, Joel, underneath that. Uh, too much. Too much information. Too much. I don't need to know all of that. Don't want to know all about that. Be quiet. Too much information. Let me be ignorant. Bye, bye, bye. This is my favorite. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> you know, I had to throw my lost in space. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Don't get too close to that. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't touch it. Next. For real. For real, For real though. For real. That's, my, that's, that's for my Terminator show. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Keep going. Let's bounce. Shut it down. Right? I don't I don't know if we have any more. Was that it? Okay. All right. What did you feel going through those? Be real with me. What did you feel? Huh? You said you felt you. You felt yourself. Anybody else? Did you feel like in there? Use some of those myself. That was a real season. Well, when did it come to an end? When did it come to an end? Did we just transition through a moment and still we're reliving it because we still don't discern what was done in us in that moment. Okay. See, I think sometimes we find ourselves on the loop of repeat because we don't pause long enough to say, I know you're trying to do something in me. We just want them to do it through us. God said, I don't want to do through, I want to do it in. Because if I do it in you, then you're going to move differently when you encounter somebody that's in the same place that you are in. That's called compassion. True. Now, I want you to go back to 1 Kings for a moment, and I want to stop here, and then we'll get you out of here. Is that all right? Yeah, this is going to be quick, y'all. It's going to be all right. Tell your name. He's going to be through. Yeah, he's going to be through in a minute. So... I'm finding my most vulnerable place is after a huge spiritual high. Huh? Right. In the world's term, it would be hangover more. You know how you way up here, then you hit. Where did it go? It's something about the grace of the anointing that kind of makes you feel empowered, yes. invigorated, strengthened, just larger than life. And then when that reality of that moment settles, how vulnerable and weak we really are. Huh? Elijah was in the height of his ministry. I mean, in a, in a serious deliverance, birthing position. It, but he wasn't recognizing let me, let, me, let me use short words, Apostle would say. That place that God has hollowed out for you to have that submission peace, that submission moment, that thing that you're really going to die and yield to, is going to be the loneliest place of your life. Huh? Even though you want to invite some folk in that space with you, they're not seeing it like you see it. They're not feeling it like you feel it. And you almost want to smack him for acting stupid. Huh? Kind of like Jesus rolling back on the disciples. Look, I just asked you jokers to pray an hour. Y'all don't slap. You don't went to sleep. I'm out here praying this truck, praying for you, calling your name out. And you over here dreaming. I mean, emotionally, how, how 
he must have felt when he brought not all of them, just the ones that he thought were close enough to recognize into this place, and they couldn't see. So that, that, that isolated, lonely place for you is really a defining moment, but it's so defining. We see it in the ministry of Jesus. We're going to see it here in the ministry of Elijah, that in both of the cases, they had to have supernatural influence in order for them to weather that place. So what I'm saying to you, when you hit the place of your submission, it's going to take more than you to come in agreement with it. Right? So, so here he was struggling with this place and the reality that he's standing between two places. He's birthing and something in him says, you know what? I just want to go. And then you start looking down, down your accomplishments. Well, I did this and did this and did this. And you think that's enough. And the greatest part of his ministry has nothing to do with the rain. It has nothing to do with the prophets. It has nothing to do uh, with him birthing this storm. It has nothing to do with being fed by a raven express. It has nothing to do with being sustained by a widow woman. All those are wonderful things. But that's not the height of his ministry. The height of this man's ministry rests on one individual, Elisha. So imagine God said, out of all the stuff that you're really anointed and graced and gifted to do, your real assignment is one person. <laughs> one? <laughs> you mean just one? <laughs> you don't know who that one person might influence and affect. Just one? You don't know who's coming across your path. You, you don't know what the assignment of that one. And, and uh, just to be able to say, you know what? Maybe, maybe that. Okay, let me, let me give, I lost y'all here. Let me, let me go into that. Massachusetts, was it $757 million? Oh, yeah, yeah, Powerball. Right. Power, thanks, Joseph. <laughs> you know I asked my friends why they didn't drop those numbers on me. Look. I can go to a little store over in, over in Pierre, so I don't know it's me in there till I hit it. <laughs> I said, what is, what is wrong with you? That woman had no clue that that little store she went in and played her birth dates. And she's multi million. Y'all still not feeling me yet. Paul had no idea consent that somebody's death was going to be the birthing to get him into the kingdom. I mean, there are things that we just walk, un walk into because of divine providence. And if we let our emotions feed it, we're going to say, ah, that's the worst moment of my life. Okay. But we don't know what's being birthed in that hour. And, and Paul described labor. He said it's like a travail. And what's travailing is for us to pull our emotions in check long enough to say, you know what, this has a purpose. Okay. We're going to stop on your feet. I'll be back next week. Oh, I'd love to have an altar call where folks just came to the altar and say, Lord, this is what's up. I'm a mess. Lord said, know that, been knowing that. <laughs> Don't bother me that you're a mess. Uh, the fact that you are identifying and coming to alignment with your situation is what I've been waiting on. You to just tell me, just that simple. Father, the reality that we find, in we find ourselves in places that are emotionally uncomfortable, heartbreaking, soul rendering, literally tearing the inside of us apart, where our human inclination or even spiritual inclination would be to bind Satan and cast out the devil. Elder Brown said, and maybe we need to let patience have her perfect work in us. So, can we, so that we, James said, can be entire, 
home wanting nothing. God, so here we are standing. We are reliving some of those moments. Some of those moments have faded away, Lord, not because we got delivered or saw you in it. We numbed ourselves up. We conditioned ourselves to keep walking. Only to find at the end of the day, we have no joy. We just want the day to be over. God, we're broken. <clears throat> and you're the only potter that we know that can take the broken piece and reshape it with the brokenness and still make it useful. So we're saying to you today in this atmosphere, we really want you to have your way with us. We really want to submit to your plan for our lives. Help us, Lord, and to seek out those individuals that are so concerned about our, our welfare that we can tell them I'm in a horrible pit I've been here for a long time and it's not working I can't seem to find my way out help us to find those places of rest cities of refuge where we can just go and Abide under the shadow maybe of my brother and my sister for a moment and just say, can I just rest here, can you? Let me abide in your shadow for a moment. God, individuals that don't judge us, they're not critical of us, that they're, they're not asking the 50,000 questions, they're just huh, being still and letting God be God on our behalf. God, even if those individuals, they can't relate to all the stuff we really want to share. Maybe they're just there to let us know that we're not totally alone. Alone in what you're doing with us, but not alone because what you're doing in us affects the whole body of Christ. And all of us can identify with this place, with this season, with this moment. But God, just like the patriarchs of old, in the day that we stand, help us to look forward into another day and pull strength out of that day and do the Abraham and said he was glad in it. Father, if I look around this room, there's so many that walk through, have come through, come out, come above, come ahead. There's so much encouragement in their walk. May my experience be the wind beneath my brothers and sisters' wings today. So before I leave this room tonight, Lord, help me discern that one that needs an embrace, a, an encouraging word, or a smile, a touch, so I let them know that we're connected and I'm touched by the feelings of your infirmity. When I see your face, I'll remember to pray and intercede that God would perform that that he has started on you and for you to be confident of it. It's my prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Would you find somebody? Look around the room before you go.